Four shocking Bigfoot sightings. The proof is out there. Each year, there are hundreds of Bigfoot sightings across the country. Some people devote their lives to the pursuit of the creature. While there's no conclusive proof Bigfoot exists, when some new evidence pops up, you can bet we're going to check it out. Hickory, North Carolina, August. Do y'all believe Bigfoot exists? Doug Teague is walking his dog, Crazy Daisy, in the woods near his home when he has an encounter worth recording. Yes, really. Looks like it's looking over top of that stump. Look at it. He's moving. He's moving, he's moving, he's moving. Daisy, come here. Daisy, come here. The object was... I, I didn't see anything. Did you guys see anything there? Pretty silver sheen to it. Doug, what? a Bigfoot... So some pretty conclusive evidence has just been brought up from uh, Bill from North Carolina here uh, who sent us a, one, a 180p video of uh, a weird black object moving through what looks to be 30 different trees. That's definitely conclusive evidence that Bigfoot exists. I don't see Good anything. Question. The video is inconclusive. Let's get a closer look. It's not easy to see, but we can trace the outline of something sitting there through the trees. But Doug said the creature was doing- Yeah, it's probably a black bear. You live in North Carolina. It's probably a black bear. Tales of large ape-like creatures lurking in the forest of Western North Carolina are as common as the region's yellow poplars. Sighting reports there go back into the 1800s and before. In 1979, a Bigfoot type creature known as Nobby- Dude, it was probably a bear on two feet. And Doug says he has something else. Video and casts of footprints he made at the time of the encounter. Casts are kind of my thing, so I was excited to get in deep with this. Cliff Barrickman, who runs the North American Bigfoot Center, compares Doug's print casts. What the fuck is this? Dude, it literally looks like they just got a mud pile and put, like, toes on it. Look at this. Those are gorillas. Okay, they're not gorillas because it's North Carolina, not the fucking Amazon rainforest. Look at this cast. We have the toes across the front, what looks like an instep or an arch, and then uh, one, two, three, four, five. You have a, um, a divergent little toe right here, which I really like. That comes down. I would, I think it's safe to say that's a very strong resemblance between the two. So Doug's video is kind of vague, but the footprints look like powerful evidence, right? Well, no. Not so fast. There's a storied history of hoaxers who've made Bigfoot prints just a to toy with the believers. So let's take the video to our experts, starting with anthropologist Kathy Strain. So this is one of the casts that he has, and it is extremely believable. The toes are all fairly even at the top. It just looks like a human foot. Those are clearly footprints. They clearly look to be 15 or so inches long. I can see the toes clearly. I can see the heel clearly. I think they're beautiful evidence that what he experienced that day was real. But when we take the prints to Dude, I just think if Big if Bigfoot actually existed, someone would have fucking killed him. You know, because people see Bigfoot all across the country, right? There's not one Bigfoot. There would be like seven, ten, thirty, right, in the world. I don't know how they're reproducing if or how they find each other, right? But say Bigfoot exists, someone would have just ran over it with their car by accident, 3 a.m. You just nail it. Maybe it's smart and it avoids cars. There's gonna be one guy that just shoots it. They're actually up to six feet apart. And when you think about that in comparison to the size of the animal that creates them, the animal would have to be around 15 foot tall to have a gait that long. Eckersley says you can't tell the size of the creature in the video. So maybe it you is- You can't tell anything. There's fucking five pixels on the screen. It's always some idiot with a fucking Nokia trying to film this shit. Is that big, but she pointed out something curious. Listen, there's something we're not hearing. If this was a Bigfoot, I would actually expect the dog who is with Doug to be really, really anxious. Dogs have an extraordinary sense of smell. So if this was something brand new, maybe something like a Sasquatch that had a totally different smell to a human, the dog would probably not be keeping quiet. I do find that fat. You, if you, does, and do any of you have a dog and you go see another dog and you come back to your house and your dog just won't stop sniffing you? Like you don't smell anything, right? But you get home and your dog is like absurdly fucking interested. Like they, like, and they're just gathering all this info that you can't even fucking notice. 
but they know where you've been. They know you've been. It's like they've been betrayed. They know you were around another animal. So if it's not a Bigfoot, what is it? Could it be a bear? Maybe. But remember, Doug said it through rocks. Bears don't do that. From what I can see, the animal is hunched over and appears to have fur covering its entire body. So it could be something like a silverback gorilla that sits in that- A silverback gorilla in North Carolina. Get, remove, somebody take this woman's degree. Gorillas That's less believable than Bigfoot. They're not known to hang out in North Carolina, which raises another possibility. It could be a human who is wearing some kind of suit to make it appear like they are covered in fur. Yep. I agree. The footprints and casts are fascinating, but not conclusive. And the video is a bit of a wash. We just can't see the figure clearly enough. Our best guess, man in a suit. But we can't completely say it's- I think that's the best guess of every Bigfoot sighting ever. Man in a suit. This story goes all the way back to California in 1971. Al Barry and his friend Ron Moorhead have come to the Sierra Nevada mountains to investigate mysterious noises reported by a bewildered group of hunters. What their microphone picks up becomes the first of a series of recordings now known as the Sierra Sounds. <laughs> what? That's a dude. That's a dude making a... And then he oinked like a pig. The recordings capture a series of guttural grunts, howls, and growls. I actually think people that genuinely believe that was Bigfoot are stupid. Like, actually stupid. Like, if you think that recording was Bigfoot, you're an idiot. Like, you, like, I don't, I can't, I can't, I can't believe you know anything. Like, that you're still somehow, like, capable of speaking. Could be considered very scary. But again, they weren't. Ron Moorhead, eyewitness. Weren't coming after us, so we don't know the intent, we don't know the agenda, we don't know what it was. Ron claims that later he even interacted with these mysterious creatures before getting his first glimpse of one. Doesn't that not? That sounds like a bird. <laughs> That sounds like a bird, like a goose. I was responding back to them, and that was uh, probably the most unique. It was the most intimate connection I ever had. Uh, then I ended up taking it uh, back to my house that night. Uh, didn't really snap a picture of it, but, you know, I got something going. Let me just say, let me just say it got real rough. <laughs> Field researcher Cliff Barrickman says the Sierra sounds are the gold standard of Bigfoot vocalizations. I've spoken to several witnesses that have reported this kind of sound. That says something about the authenticity of not only their sighting. I believe more in UFO abductions than Bigfoot. Because UFO abduction, even though it has less evidence, it makes more plausible sense that there would be no evidence. Because it's an alien. It's an alien that abducted you, could have wiped your memory of some sort, and it's, it might have the technology to be hidden, right? Bigfoot, a large 10-foot dude that is covered in fur and oafs around in the woods. Like, you're telling me no one would have seen him? Uh, we're, ju we're just going to cut right to the chase here. This is an interruption. G Fuel Shaker Cup tagged below, bottom left. Back to the vid. The recordings range from guttural growls <laughs> to wild whoops. <laughs> to something that almost sounds like language. Bro, that's clearly just a dude going, There's a retired cryptolinguist from the U.S. Navy. He's realized that there are phonemic patterns that repeat in the sounds. Those are words. Sasquatches might be talking to one another. I think you're a nut job. I think you, I think you're a cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Here's the thing about Bigfoot sounds. They're easy to fake and easier to misidentify. We've heard examples of both. So, let's How do you even know what a Bigfoot would sound like? You've never seen one. It could sound like anything. It could sound like a fucking bird. It could sound like a rat. It could go... Like, you don't know. It's so easy to fake. I could say, oh, I saw Bigfoot. Here's the audio recording. 
That's that's Bigfoot. So here we have three phrases. First, God has been examines the guttural sound. <laughs> Next, the whooping. The second has these low to high up sweep. <laughs> and finally, the chatter. <laughs> and those almost sound like words. The question, could those come from any known large animals native to the area? We're now going to listen to the sound of an elk bugling. <laughs> the sound of an elk bugling has much longer tonal signals. This is not a match. Now let's listen to the sounds of a black bear. <laughs> Dude, it just sounds like a dude. The Sierra sounds are on a much more advanced level. Goddessman also rules out an assortment of smaller creatures since they lack lung capacity. I want to own a raccoon so bad. I want to own a raccoon so fucking bad. And I know, I know they're like not really that good at pets, but like, oh my God, they're so cute. If you look up Bigfoot, this is the first thing that comes up. Like, you're telling me that's not a man in a gorilla suit. Whoop, 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 whoop. Whoop, whoop. Burp, burp, burp. So human. could the sounds have been made by other humans? I do not believe it is possible for this to be human because it... Bro, we, I literally just did it. Whoop, whoop. Burp, 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 burp. It has a great variance of going to very high pitch down to a very low growl all within seconds. Of we're not capable of that without blowing out our vocal cords. My I actually can't do the whoop whoop, but that's because I've been losing my voice. The Sierra Sounds recordings are legitimate. Scientists and even some linguists point to them as evidence multiple Bigfoots were communicating with each other, as well as with Moorhead and Barry. Multiple! And we've never seen one. Our verdict here? On film. Unidentified animal sounds. Regardless- Verdict here, unidentified- Yo, we just had an expert- Tell us it's Bigfoot. This man, unidentified animal sounds. It's 2020 on a trail in the San Gabriel Mountains in Southern California. And this video is going to be in fucking 180p. In 2020, this man's going to have the one iPod fucking touch that is still in existence. A hiker spots something odd nearby and starts recording. From a high vantage point, we see a craggy mountain in the distance. Suddenly, wow, what a what a what a low quality video for fucking 2020. For 2020. Wow, it's in 480p. Camera zooms in on one of the nearby evergreens. Partway up the trunk, something or someone seems to be staring back. That just looks at it, Ed. That literally just looks at it, Ed. There's a figure right here, and it definitely appears to be a hominid shape. You see a head, what appear to be shoulders and two arms and possibly even two legs. And the figure appears to be maybe 15 or 20 feet up in the tree. Usually, Bigfoot sightings are associated with the northern part of the state, but it's not out of the question it's down south. It's not moving at all. Bigfoot is, by definition, big. Some say they grow to be 800 pounds. Could they really climb a tree and hang up there with Yeah, the and not snap the branch? If you're an 800-pound fucking Bigfoot and you're sitting on a fucking tree that's this big, that shit's just gonna collapse. The position of this creature in the tree suggests it would have to be on the smaller side. The possibility of a tree climbing in Sasquatch. Oh, maybe Sasquatch. it's a newborn. Okay, it's a newborn Sasquatch. That's what it is. Zoologist Roxy Furman says perhaps this is a different, smaller animal altogether. The animal that it looks most similar to is the chimpanzee. Well, there. How is there a fucking chimp in California? There is one high profile chimp once known to this area. There is a story about a chimpanzee called Mo who escaped in 2008 and hasn't been seen since. Bro, and he lived for 12 more years? He li How long do chimps live? An intriguing possibility, but the chronology makes the Mo theory a stretch. At the time of escape, the chimpanzee was 42 years old, which is already massively Wow, pushing. they can live that long? ...the upper limit for chimpanzees. This video, which has taken many years on, would make the chimpanzee about 60 years at the time. If that chimpanzee was still alive at 60, it would be a shock to science. Okay, so unlikely that it was Mo, And according to biologist Floyd Hayes, perhaps not something living at all. 
what if it just looks like a like like a, a Sasquatch? Have you ever been walking in the woods and something, or just driving and something has a human shape and it freaks you out, and then you get closer to it and it's just like a rock with like a tree, and it's just the way it was shaped and how you looked at it, it looked like a person. Like, that's just kind of what it looks like. I think it's uh, very possible that this is some sort of an optical illusion. It could be resulting yeah. from a weird shadow or from branches or something, rocks well, just in the background. Edit. Oh, God, There's we already no know that one's fake. Go to the last one. 2015, okay, high-quality video here. He's recording himself during a routine mushroom hunt in the woods of northern Illinois. He's looked pretty big. The footage, shot from his perspective, shows him calmly narrating as he walks through the forest, pointing his camera at various mushrooms scattered on trees and logs. And this one looks like it has a bite out of it. <laughs> After pointing out what looks like a half-eaten mushroom, the man is startled by a strange and scary sound seemingly coming from nearby. Huh? If I heard that in the woods, fuck, fuck talking about filming that. If I'm in the middle of the woods and I hear, I'm running. I'm running as fast as humanly possible back to my car and I'm out. And he's not nervous. I would, I would visibly go, what the it's fuck? It's a long drawn out howl. It lasts about nine seconds and certainly sounds like an animal of some kind. The mushroom hunter pans his camera back and forth to see if he can spot anything, but sees nothing. Oh, wow. I think wow. it's time to go. Field I think it's time to go. He says it so calmly. Oh, yeah, there's another big footprint. Yeah, another big footprint. Yeah, we need that one. Yeah, bring out the mud. This particular vocalization has a definitive sound of aggressiveness. I would say whatever is making this sound is trying to scare this person out of its area. One theory is that this particular alleged Sasquatch is just defending its feeding grounds. Bigfoot is what we call an opportunistic omnivore, which basically means it eats anything. And it would make perfect sense that as an omnivore, Bigfoot would find an abundant and plentiful food source in this mushroom patch. You think, you think a nine foot animal with hands, with opposable thumbs would lean down to three feet on the ground and take a miniature dog looking bite out of the fucking mushroom. Most Bigfoot sightings in Illinois occur in the South in places like Shawnee National Forest. But this encounter allegedly took place in the North. There is a theory that Bigfoot is a transient species and one of the reasons they're so hard to find is that they're always on the move. So if they exist, it's plausible they could be in the area. But let's turn it over to our experts. Like, I understand they could be, like, always moving, never really having a habitat. And so it's like, but still, like, we would have seen it and had it on film. Dude, this is so dumb. Yeah, here we go with this woman again. Concentrate. Nah, it's definitely Bigfoot. Nah, it's definitely Bigfoot. I know, I know audio recordings when I hear them. But this was very loud and very extended. Biologist Dr. Floyd Hayes examines the other possibilities. The coyote or wolf can have a long howl, but it sounds quite different than that. It sounds more like a dog howl. Dude, it sounds like a dinosaur. It doesn't even sound like a fucking ape. And I don't think there's any smaller animals like a fox that would make a call that loud. So the only possibilities in my mind would be either a human or this mythical Bigfoot creature. Yeah, probably a human. All right, what a dumbass video. Moving on. Uh, Mez for the sub. Yeah, Bigfoot doesn't exist. Pierce for the sub. Uh, Pork for the five spitties. You should do a call lander. Uh, <laughs>